With the Shadowlands coming and with the fear of missing out that we had in BFA and Legion, many of you are wondering, what should I get done on that first day of being cat? Well, let's take a look. There are so many systems coming in the Shadowlands, and as we have capped so many characters over the recent weeks in order to test out leveling, we have had plenty of opportunity to find out exactly what your priority should be. Because in Legion and BFA, if you didn't get them done straight away, you felt like you were behind, and you were actually behind. Especially if you are looking to raid or get into early PvP, being behind in power can be a really difficult thing. We have Renown, we have Soulbinds, we have Conduits, we have Legendary Recipes, we have Soulash, we have Emissary Quest, we have MS, uh, world quests in general, reputation. All these things are things we need to consider. But let's relax for a moment. Shadowlands is going to be much more alt friendly than before. Let's take away all the things that are on weekly lockouts that you don't need to do on the day. That significantly makes things easier, doesn't it? Let's take out all the things that don't actually revolve around player power. There you go. We're actually left with very few things that you really need to concern yourself with, and those things are actually optional. This is going to be a big mindset change from the BFA and Legion lifestyles, similar to what we had in 8.3. You remember when 8.3 came out, people were complaining en masse that some of the daily quests just took too long. If we had a quest to kill three rares in a zone, people were like, this took me two hours to get done, and then people slowly realized, actually, I don't need to do those things. I get a very small reward for a huge time investment doesn't really add up and over the over those like four weeks or so the player base adapted i can optionally do those things i get a slight benefit from doing it but nothing that's actually going to impact me in any real way so it's fine i can start to ignore certain things and that is what blizzard is moving back to they're moving back to that tbc wrath of the lich king style era with a couple of mandatory things like the Sons of Hodea, for example, but loads and loads and loads of other content that is entirely at your discretion whether or not you want to do it. Do you want to do the Calawak Fishing Derby? Go ahead. It won't really do anything for you other than be prestigious and grant you some sort of extra reward on top of your character. And that is what is happening in the Shadowlands for the most part. Let's start with Renown. Renown is weekly capped, and we've had it confirmed by Ian Hazacostas that they are going to ensure that people who cap early, because typically the expansion will launch one day before the server reset, and historically, players who have turbo capped, absolutely gone full nerd, have been able to get things done, and then the servers reset the very next morning and get a week ahead. They have confirmed that is not going to be the case this time. Now, there's a caveat there. They have been wrong in the past, but they're aware of it, and they're saying it's not going to happen this time, so we'll take them on their word for it this time. That means that Renown isn't a big deal. You don't need to cap super, super fast to get a week ahead on Renown, which would be a big deal because a Renown plays into your soul binds in terms of how much power you're going to get from them and in terms of world quest item level rewards. So with that being said, don't worry about your Renown. You can actually leave it until later in the week. There are three Renown world quests that you're going to be doing. One of them will be a campaign quest. I know I just said world quest, but one of them's a campaign quest. One of them will be a weekly quest to collect souls from the Maw. And another one is going to be one of the callings, okay? So you can do them at any point. Don't worry about it too much. You're going to be fine. You don't need to rush this out day one. It's nothing you need to worry about until the end of the reset. The same can be said for your soul ash from Torghast. Torghast recipes require, or legendary recipes, require soul ash as a currency. That is weekly locked. And remember, if you look at our last Torghast video, your base gear is more important than you realize when going to get your soul ash, which means... Leave that to the end of the week. Don't worry about it too much. Wait until you've done some dungeons, done some gearing up in basic gear, then go and do Torghast towards the end of the week when you'll have a much easier time than trying to bash your brains through it on a very undergeared, fresh level 60 character. That's not going to be a lot of fun. So, Renown, Torghast, push it to the back of your mind. You don't need to worry about it too much. One thing you do need to do, though, is find out where your legendary recipes come from. And I recommend you use our spreadsheet that has been updated by Finn, which has the legendaries you probably want and the sources of them, because some of them do come from reputation. Now, why I'm telling you to be aware of that is the emissaries are now called callings. They do reward reputation. That's something you want to be aware of because once you cap, 
the likelihood is you will have three callings. Now, there's some variation. Sometimes there was just the one. Sometimes we had all three. And that means that one of them will expire on the day that you cap. Now, reputation only requires honored for the recipes. So another great quality of life improvement. We're not going to be like BFA where there was that race to Exalted with the champions of Azeroth. That's gone. But you might cap and you might see that the calling that you have for the day is going to expire and it is one of the reputation sources that you are interested in. But bear in mind again, that doesn't mean you're interested in getting all reputation done. You no longer need to worry about world quests and callings slash emissaries that you need to get all of them done because they're not going to provide you anything that's a direct player power increase. You're going to get things like anima from there, which directly feeds into your sanctum, which is for optional activities. So don't worry about that. And you will get some gear, yet it's likely not to be great quality gear because now and this is an important note the item level of the world quests and all this kind of stuff where you're getting these treasure chests is tied to your renown it is no longer based on the item level of your character so in bfa as your item level went up so if you did some lfr you did some heroic or some sort of boosting then your item level might shoot up very quickly and what you'd notice is that the world quests would go up appropriately this time around is tied to renown the item level will stay the same until you hit certain renown levels then the item levels will go up so it's a separate system so don't worry about farming all the world quest items you can fill out a couple of slots but world quests take a much much longer time now okay these are supposed to be a separate gameplay path if you prefer to do dungeons that's going to be more efficient for you and more fun if you prefer to do world quests that's going to be more efficient for you and more fun now pathfinder will be coming into the game at some point we have had that confirmed so you will ultimately want to get reputation but don't stress about it don't have this fear of missing out about doing world quest sweeps because that's going to take you an exceptionally long time it's not something you really want to focus on as certainly if you feel like you're on sort of time constraint we're going to have a weird moment in the Shadowlands where people are going to be presented with a huge wealth of content. Everything from weekly conduits to doing campaigns to doing renown to doing world quests to farming the maw to doing Torghast. And then they're going to realize, actually, a lot of this stuff is optional. And you'll either fall on one of two sides. If things aren't mandatory, a lot of players consider there to be no content, which is not true. It's just that a lot of players, certainly over the last, say, six years, have very much relied on Blizzard to say, you should do this, this, and this. And every time they log in, they have a checklist. Now, some people view that as chores, and they're going to be happy that those chores are no longer there. So... Bear in mind, this is a better system, but there will be an adaption period where you're like, oh, all the stuff I used to do actually isn't that relevant anymore. Let's talk about the Soulbinds a little bit. Again, they're tied to Renown, which is weekly locked. So you don't need to worry about that too much. Getting your Soulbinds done is a good thing. You're going to gain some power, but you're going to get the most power out of that as soon as you unlock your Soulbind. Every bit of Renown after that is going to give you some incremental increase. Not all of them are power related. The most important ones are going to be Conduit Slot unlocks but again it's weekly capped don't stress about it too much let's talk about conduits this is something you will want to target along with your legendary recipes that we mentioned earlier find out where they come from and go and get those things done especially if they're world boss recipes that could be a real tricky one that we haven't seen how that's going to play out as for conduits you're going to be jump, jumping into early dungeons. We've talked about gear a little bit. We've talked about now getting into dungeons. This brings up two things. One, there is a daily normal dungeon quest and a daily heroic. This rewards you a choice of a lot of reputation. This is something you want to focus on as you get started on day one. Find out what your daily normal is and your daily heroic. They are going to be found in Oribos. Go and find them. Figure out what they are because they will give you a large chunk of reputation if reputation is something you want to get done. Personally, if you're looking to get Pathfinder, this is how I would do it. I wouldn't grind world quests unless I absolutely felt it was necessary. I wouldn't even do the callings unless I really thought it was necessary. Instead, I would gradually get my reputation from doing daily dungeons and daily heroics whenever I have such time. The second thing, gear. Do not do... What so many people did in BFA and Legion and buy and bankrupt yourself buying pre-raid BIS. This was a ludicrous situation that happened at the start of both expansions. I want you to join the side of the people who are laughing at people doing this because it is insanity. 
when the game comes out, we will be limited. We will have Mythic Zero and Heroic Dungeons, but that's it. And we will only have the item levels in the entire game limited to that very, very low bar. Now, what tends to happen is people start picking up BOEs. And the people who are in the know, which will hopefully be you guys, will understand this gear is insanely useless in about two weeks' time. Because they're going to unleash raiding, they're going to open up the PvP seasons, and the item levels available in the game are just going to go pfft. And what we saw happening was people literally bankrupting themselves buying 340 gear, which then just jumped up to like 370 within a week's time. And they were utterly broke and wearing entirely useless gear compared to the guys who could then jump into Mythic Plus, who could then jump into Raiding, who could then jump into PvP. So people will be charging extortionate prices for profession gear, and for stuff that's dropped in BOE that is very low item level, please do not fall into that trap, I beg of you, okay? So, go and get that gear. Go and do some Mythic Zero while everybody's learning. Great time to do it. Do your heroics, then go and do Torghast later in the week, and you'll have a much easier, smoother experience. So, I've, I've listed off a lot of stuff there. Not a lot of it sounds very much required. Exactly. That's the whole point. In fact, in my Shadowlands first week, I am more than looking forward to doing some professions, capping some alts, doing that kind of stuff. Why? There's not a huge amount that is required. If you want to focus on one character and start working on your weekly Covenant Sanctum campaign and things like that, great, go and do that. That's totally fine. If you don't want to do that, feel free to do other things. That is the point in the Shadowlands. There is an absolutely enormous amount of content, guys. But a lot of it is optional. A lot of it can take place at any point during the week. You may want to jump into some more farming so you can start acquiring some gem slots and get that early reputation with Venari. That's entirely up to you if that is important to you. If it's important for you to get things like extra gem slots on gear, go ahead and do that. But a lot of you, that won't be that big of a deal. So feel free to start working on your professions. Remember, multiboxing has died. We have a video coming up on that, so stay subscribed. But the market's going to be different. Some of you will find a great, great, great amount of income farming herbs. Because with the multi-box is gone, the market's going to be very different. The auction house is going to be much drier. And we could be looking at a repeat of BFA where guilds were spending millions upon millions of gold for potions and things. Certainly the Mythic Raiders, because they require them for that level of content. And you can make a killing. So do the opposite. Don't go buy pre bis Take your time. Maybe do some professions start gathering all that gold because it's going to be free and it's going to be available before more and more people cap, all right? I want to leave you with guys thinking, Shadowlands is looking pretty good, especially for your alts. You're going to have a whole, 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 whole mess full of content to do. Not a great deal of it is stressful. Don't feel you need to log in every day to get things like emissaries done. You don't need to do that. You can take your time. You can focus on what you enjoy. It's going to be a very specific mentality to, uh, change from what we've had in the past. And I'm sure some of you are probably listening to this going, sounds like I've got nothing to do. That's the difference Blizzard wants to get away from. The idea that Blizzard needs to write down for you, like a child, essentially, a list of things you need to get done, a to-do list, in order for you to play the game. Instead, they're going to provide you with lots and lots of pathways that you can go through. Choose the one you enjoy the most and focus on that. Thank you very much for listening, guys. Don't stress it. Challenge is looking pretty good. I hope to have several alts in the first week. Bye-bye.